Hello and welcome. In ancient Greece, when the people wanted to know the future, they had to visit an oracle. I will be your oracle today. We will visit the future together. Because this is impossible to predict the future with accuracy, we will focus on two basic things, artificial intelligence and blockchain. Artificial intelligence, for lack of a better word, is the struggle of humanity to create a simulation of a brain-like neural network. It has smaller complexity than a biological brain. It's good for extremely complex tasks you want to program. It is better than employing a programmer to do the job for you. It utilizes randomness and particle swarm optimization. It is specialized in only one task, and it learns from data provided in data sets. We call this process machine learning. This is the AI training in petaflops per day, per days, from the Perceptron era, which was the 60s, up to 2020 with AlphaGo Zero. This is 18, uh, th this is one with 18 zeros time, times more than what we started with. 18 orders of magnitude. And you might ask why this is happening so quickly. We have two common misperceptions as humans. The first one is that we tend to overestimate what will happen in one year and we tend to underestimate what will happen in 10 years by an order of magnitude, again, about 1,000 times more. So this is a chart that it represents the human intuitive perspective of technological advancement in 10 years. That means that within 20 years, you will have 1 million times more progress. This is a scary chart, <laughs> OK, but please bear with me. This is the AI and machine learning history chart so far. We will focus on the bottom part of the chart, which is the neural nets and deep learning, and more specifically about the convolutional neural networks, which we call CNNs. We recently found out that a cellular automaton that is Turing complete can be used as a convolutional neural network. That means that you can feed it some data, and it can learn from that data. We call this process machine learning through convolutional neural networks. So now we know that Bitcoin already employs two of them. That is CA110 and CA30. If you want to know more about cellular automata, there is a great book from Stephen Wolfram, A New Kind of Science, a very big one. I would indulge you to look it up. So this image is fake, but the math is real. Primitive AI agents can be easily militarized. It, then, it, it only takes 0.2 seconds for a man to send a signal from his brain to his finger to shoot a gun. At the same time, it only takes one nanosecond for the machine to recognize and shoot. To give you a perspective here is one second for the machine is 31.7 years for the man. And the question is, what if somebody hacks it? This is why we should employ blockchain. So AI frameworks can be stored securely on the blockchain. It can be encrypted. You can access it. And there is an auditable trade when you do it. It is immutable there, because blockchain is employed in multiple nodes, so in many copies. And then you have another bonus, deep data learning from blockchain storage. We can store our data on the blockchain. And while we do that, the AI can learn from it. We call this process in data science active deep learning, which means that an AI can be trained by live data, data ev with everyday usage. That means that 
your transactions, if you drank a coffee today or paid for it, will be there. And this is the holy, grace, holy grail of science, how to construct a generic form of artificial intelligence. I want you to understand that AI on the blockchain is an analogous to a neuron cell culture grown in a petri dish. It is a biological form. Society's habits, purchases, social data will be the food, the agar that feeds it, and, and it will learn from it. AGI on the blockchain has to have synergy and immutability. That means that you will have multiple agents that can collaborate one with, an, with the other to actually do something complex. For instance, let's say that you want your car to drive you, your automatic driving car, to drive you from London to Manchester. You employ an AI agent that with your money will employ another AI agent to learn about the weather and another AI agent to learn about the traffic and so forth. I want you to extrapolate this to many fields of science. Medicine, stock markets, everything will be there. Immutable data ensures transparency. I cannot say that more loud. Law will be enforced in case of a fraud and, use, and misuse. We tend to do bad things when we know we can't get away with it. It's the story of Ringo Gyges, Greek story. We have two problems to solve. Philosopher Nick Bostrom said, how do we make sure that a super AI has the same objectives as the humanity? And then the second one is a political problem. Who controls it? We have two answers. The first one is that the AI, for the first time in history, can learn from humanity's truth. You submit your data with microtransactions. You cannot lie about these things, because it will not be economic. The contribution of data will be services that, if they provide good uh, outputs, then they, can be, then they can be a source of wealth for you. IoT, whatever you can imagine, will be there. And the answer to the political problem is that we will be able to control it from everywhere in the world. Imagine that one AGI will be owned by one company. Everybody in the big data is trying to construct one. I believe their biggest flaw is that they are trying to do that by utilizing data sets from a very, very narrow perspective. Nobody ever saw the elephant in the room, that in order to have a generic form of AI, everybody needs to contribute. Finally, what comes next? You heard about the metanet. That will be the blockchain-based internet. An internet that will be secured for your data. The future of money will be the information stored on the metanet. Value will be derived from the usability of your data. The synergy between the AI and the humanity will extend our capabilities and transform us to metahumans. We will probably face no diseases, and at the very end, why not? Possibly mortality. This is a vehicle. This is a vehicle that will drive humanity one step further. If you ever heard about it, there is a scale that we call the Kardashev scale. We are now at the point of 0.72, if I recall correctly. That's the vehicle to go to a Kardashev scale type one civilization. Finally, it will be the tool for assisted governance and identity. And I know no better guy in the room, maybe I know one, but I know 
one of the best, which is my colleague and best friend, Ian Grigg. Thank you. Hi guys, I'm Johanna Bota from CoinGeek.com and I'm here with Konstantinos um, from Voluba. Ooh, I yeah. got that right. Um, now you co-authored a paper with Ian about AI and blockchain and where they meet. Well, um, the paper is uh, how to construct an artificial general intelligence on the blockchain. This is uh, what uh, we talked about. It's about how to have a synergy of artificial intelligent agents on the blockchain. And if you have an incentive to make them work together, you can solve complex problems. Why would you want to make them work together? Give me an example. For instance, say that uh, you want to go from London to Manchester. You employ an artificial intelligent agent to drive your car, which will be done securely. Nobody will be able to hack it because it will be on the blockchain. And that agent can employ another agent to learn about the weather and then another agent to know about the traffic and uh, so forth. The great uh, secret here is that in order to have an artificial general intelligence on the blockchain, we have the perfect ground for deep learning from all the humanity. Everybody can participate. Can you touch on some very specific points? Like what did you want the crowd to leave with after your speech? Well, blockchain as a technology Entangled with AI agents are the vehicle that will drive humanity to the next stage. We're talking about an artificial general intelligence that will be able to learn from our own data and we will be able to use it to solve complex problems that we have no idea how to solve them today. To help us in the future. I hope so. All I right. So. Thank you, Constantino. Thank you.